1137 days. That's how long I've been running a public Minecraft server. Over 232,000 different players have joined the server and every day there's hundreds online. We've faced thousands of DDoS attacks, dozens of game-breaking exploits which almost wiped the server out, players hacking into the server and logging in as me, scams, famous YouTubers with tens of millions of subs joining, and just an endless onslaught of crashes and issues. Yet here we are three years later and tens of thousands of dollars spent. Today I'm going to be telling you the full story behind my Minecraft server and give you a perspective never seen before on YouTube. The story of the OG network begins way back on the 15th of February 2021. A friend of mine messaged me, mentioning he was going to start an Australian survival game server and wanted to pay me to advertise it. Now, I had always wanted to run a Minecraft server. Many of my first ever YouTube videos were about Minecraft servers and I even tried multiple times when I was a kid. That being said, I knew that the time and effort it would take would be far beyond anything I could handle, especially with me still running my YouTube channel after all. But if I had someone else helping me, someone else with the technical know-how and skills, I could finally run the server I had always dreamed of running. So I asked a few questions and then basically told my friend we could partner on it and work together. He agreed and considering I was very anti pay to win at the time, we mutually decided on starting a non pay to win survival game server like MCSG. And little did I know how many mistakes we had already made, but we'll get to that much much later. Anywho, I eventually convinced my friend to drop the Australian part for now and just to focus on an American player base since that's where my audience is from and the majority of Minecraft players are. A few hours later I had come up with a name, OG Network, and the plan was to attempt to revive many of Minecraft's older game modes that had fallen out of popularity in a non-pay-to-win way. We would start with survival games, then release a survival server, factions, prison, you name it, we were going to revive OG Minecraft. It was going to be great. My videos at the time were very much focused on old Minecraft and its history as well as older servers. This would be absolutely perfect. Okay, so we had an idea, we were excited, but we still had a lot of work left to do. We needed to actually release our first game mode, Survival Games. It was now day one of running the server, or rather, week one. We scoured the internet and old posts to find the old Survival Games maps, downloaded them, updated them by placing some chests around, got a hub downloaded, basic plugins, designed some basic ranks and cosmetics, and wait a minute, we need an actual Survival Games plugin. Okay, this seven-year-old plugin should do the job job, right? Well, not exactly. The plugin was very old, and while it worked with the newer versions of the game, it lacked many modern features essential to the game mode's functioning. So we needed a developer to edit the plugin and add a few features. Now, this is where the OG Network's first of many, many, many problems would begin. The original developer of the Survival Games plugin said we could edit it, but couldn't do it for us as he was busy. So we had to look for another developer to edit and modify the existing plugin. For anybody who's run a Minecraft server before, you'll know just just how hard it is to find competent plugin developers. But rather than tell you, I'll show you. The first developer who responded to our post quoted us 250 US dollars and one week for all the changes and seemed to have quite a bit of experience. Well, at least in the very much inexperienced eyes of my friend and I. Anywho, he asked for half the money up front as that was normal practice apparently and we agreed, eagerly waiting in anticipation of our ready to go SG plugin in one week. Two days then passed with not much work done. The dev is supposedly looking over the source code. Okay, another day passes, still no updates or work has been done. Me and the other server owner are quite concerned. The dev's response time also begins gradually getting worse, taking almost an entire day to respond to our Discord messages. The dev reassures us though that things will be fine, despite the fact that he had not shown us any evidence of progress. Another day goes by and my friend DMs the dev asking for some code updates with some technical questions, only to get this as the response. It was at this point, almost five days after the dev supposedly started working for us and two days until the supposed deadline, that we realized 
this was going nowhere. We tried asking the dev for a refund as he hadn't produced anything for us at all, merely sending a screenshot of the stock code of the plugin we already had opened in his editor. My friend had a bit of a nasty back and forth with him, but eventually we charge back the upfront payment and move on. Okay, so that's about one week wasted now with zero progress. Let's try another dev. In the second week, we got a different developer working on the plugin. However, this time things were also problematic. You see, the actual developer and then the individual who we were communicating with were not the same. Basically, the guy we were talking to ran like some sort of developer agency and was receiving a commission from each project like a middleman. The developer was therefore not allowed to actually speak to us as if they did, then we could just hire them alone and cut this useless middleman out entirely. But the few times we did speak to the actual developer while they were on our server testing the plugin, they kept giving us conflicting information about what was and wasn't possible with the plugin as well as when the plugin could be completed. It was a mess and it was extremely annoying as every time we had a question, we'd have to go through this stupid dev manager guy who gave us conflicting information as he clearly had no idea what he was talking about, rather than the actual developer who was working on our plugin, delaying progress a lot. We were getting pretty stressed out at this point as everything was so up in the air, our questions weren't getting straight answers, and we were worried the plugin wasn't even going to be done remotely soon. So we tried talking with the actual dev, but every time he would just tell us we had to go through the manager, slowing progress immensely. And then there was the frustrating issue that when things were done, they just wouldn't work when we tested them. It was a huge headache. Anyways, after about another week and a half, most things do end up getting done with the plugin. It was extremely buggy though. I do a live stream and we do a beta. There's a few issues like the deathmatch not starting and whatnot, but overall it actually went okay and players seem to enjoy it. We do one more beta about two weeks later and things are finally ready to go for public release. On April the 4th, 2021, about a month and a half after OG Network development began, the server would publicly release. I made a big video about it to promote it, and within mere hours, we had already hit over 100 players online. People were really enjoying the server, and games were running the entire day, no issue, easily filling up to their max capacity of 24. But behind the scenes, well, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that things were literally on fire. Now, I really need to reiterate here just how inexperienced and over our heads me and the other server owner were. The first day the server was up, it probably crashed about 16 times in two hours, and that's no exaggeration. So many things were just not set up properly. For example, we had accidentally left a bunch of world edit commands accessible that could crash the server. People who died in game were able to fly out super far in spectator mode and crash the server because the world border wasn't set properly. That one was quite funny to be honest. And the server in general was just not able to handle the amount of traffic it was getting. In in fact, throughout the entire first week of the server's function, it was utter pandemonium. At one stage, five out of six of the survival games lobbies we had just randomly stopped working. I was meant to do a stream the day after the server released, but things were so laggy and broken that we had to postpone it, otherwise my stream would crash the server. I mean, just going through our Discord's bug report channel from the time is absolutely hilarious. We had issues from pig spawning in game, ranked perks not working, players being spammed with 500 server kick messages, items just randomly disappearing, to people being able to move and kill other players before the game even started. To say the server was borderline non-functional would not be an overstatement. But in a way, the absolutely scuffed nature of the server did play quite well into the server's OG vibe we were going for. And not everything was going wrong either. Because the server had gotten a lot of attention after release, we actually got some much needed help from the community. My friend who was managing the server backend effectively worked tirelessly that first week. Almost every waking hour was spent trying to fix the never-ending slew of issues. Luckily, our Service 2 admins would also join around this time, and desperate for any help at all, both were promoted and received permissions almost instantly. Things began to gradually improve from then on, as we got issues fixed and the server finally stabilized once we had a staff team in place. One issue now though, while the server was stable and playable for the most part, it had been almost two weeks since the server had released, and it was bleeding players. While the first few days we were consistently hitting over 100 players online, daily, now by the second week, we were lucky to see more than 30 to 40 people online, regularly seeing as low as 7 players in downtime. I decided to do a live stream on the server to get some activity and attention on it again, which after a server DDoS during the first 10 seconds of the first game, went decently and did help a bit. Oh yeah, did I mention that the server was getting DDoSed about every single hour for the first month of our release by the way? That's right, on top of the absolute mess we were already dealing with, as is quite common in the Minecraft server 
ever seen, our server was repeatedly being DDoSed over and over and over, likely by competitors. This is normal for Minecraft servers. You'd be surprised at the amount of cybercrime associated with them that goes on behind closed doors. The perfect example of this is the fact that one of the largest DDoS attacks ever recorded at 2.5 terabytes per second was actually against a Minecraft server known as Wincraft. What better way to deal with competition than to render their server unplayable, I guess. Anyways, the stream's success was short-lived, as by the end of the server's third week, we were barely seeing above 20 players online. However, there was one ray of shining hope. Okay, so let's quickly pause here. My survival game server has been up for three weeks at this point, about 21 days roughly. Now, this was in early 2021, and back then survival games as a minigame was still popular. There were a handful of servers that regularly would see up to 100 players online. Obviously not as much as the game mode used to get back in the 2010s when every YouTuber was making videos playing it, but still a healthy amount regardless. Nowadays, that situation has changed entirely, as all, and yes, I mean all survival game servers, but one have closed their doors. But back in 2021, that just wasn't the case. There was still a demand for survival game servers, and that demand just so happened to be our lucky break. A few smaller streamers had chanced upon our server, and with their streams, managed to help keep the server alive. One such streamer somehow managed to get a viral tweet talking about reviving survival games on our server. We decided to capitalize on this opportunity and organized a survival games tournament with a bunch of smaller streamers and YouTubers for the biggest event on the server to date. And spoiler alert, it was big. The server peaked at almost 200 players online, almost double the release player count, the most we'd had online yet, with likely a few hundred people watching the tournament across the various streams. However, this would also be the first time my server would get into some serious drama. All the videos and clips besides my stream are gone from that time, but let me explain what happened. One of the YouTubers who participated in this tournament happened to be the Duper Trooper, much smaller at the time with around 30k subs. Duper Trooper and some of the other streamers and players in the event decided to join a voice chat together whilst playing the event. As I'm sure you may be aware, Duper Trooper has a bit of a mischievous sense of humour, and such a sense of humour didn't quite vibe with a lot of the players playing in the tournament who happened to to be a part of a more, let's just say, sensitive type of community. You know, the kind of ones you would see trying to cancel people on Twitter for the stupidest of reasons. Duper Trooper during the event happened to jokingly make fun of a streamer's username by rearranging certain letters in their name to, well, say something rather amusing. Now, keep in mind, like I said, I was doing my own stream at the time and all the footage and VODs of the said incident were removed not long after the event concluded, but the streamer involved wasn't happy and after the event ended, it decided to make a twit longer about my server which got hundreds of likes. Now, regardless of the outcome, the fact that they didn't even try to message us owners first, and also the fact that the individuals in the tournament were other YouTubers that don't represent the server, I put on my PR voice and resolved the matter with the parties involved. But the damage was ultimately done, as almost all the small streamers decided to no longer play on the server, dooming the fate of survival games. During the fourth and final week of April and the server's release, player numbers fell to record lows, to the point that not even a single game of survival games would start in uptime. We'd barely see more than 10 to 15 people online. To be fair, this would have happened regardless as survival games died hard across all Minecraft servers throughout 2021, but this whole ordeal was very annoying to say the least. We had gone from record high players to record low players in the same week, and my final message to that community who opted to create a public nuisance rather than resolve the drama in a mature way was a pretty strongly worded one. Right, so now it's the end of April and early May of 2021, one month roughly 30 days after the server's release, and it's as good as dead. Dead just like me after writing, recording, and editing this 15,000 word video. You all better subscribe. This video has taken by far the most effort of any video I've ever made. But don't take it from me. Hear it from my server's most popular streamer, Frez. Subscribe to the Mr. Epic is the best server owner in the world. The best server owner ever. The best person ever. He also beat me 12-1 in Rocket League. Thank you, Frez. Also check out my Patreon to support me, and you can download the various spawns, worlds, and hubs from my server, as well as special plugins and maps from events we've run in the past. Anyways, the server dying only a few weeks after release is the most common outcome of most YouTubers' Minecraft servers, and Minecraft servers in general. And normally this would be where the server would shut its doors, say its goodbyes, and everyone would move on. But we weren't done yet. Behind the scenes, we'd been working on an SMP, an OG SMP, that formed a bridge between true Minecraft's 
Survival and Anarchy. A Minecraft SMP with an economy, small spawn, and one where griefing and PvP was allowed, very similar to the beloved but mostly gone survival servers from 2012. The OG SMP would release on April the 26th to some serious activity. The first day we already had 100 players back online on the SMP. Things were looking up again for the server, until exactly 3 hours later when the server crashed, over and over and over again, and we had to take it down for maintenance. Two hours later it was back up again, no problem, fantastic, just growing pains, right? Four hours later, down again, five hours later, up again, and then things were fine, for four days. May 1st, server down again, we switched to server host because the other one legitimately could not handle the traffic the SMP was receiving. May 2nd, that host switch failed, so back to the old host and back to more downtime. May 4th, downtime again, May 6th, more downtime, completely out of our control, our host was absolutely incompetent. I'm talking about you, Bitania hosting, who are now also defunct, and some of our server's players were sick of the issues, joining Bitania's Discord and promptly being banned. May 7th, downtime. May 8th, downtime. May 9th, downtime, then finally things stabilized. May 20th, we moved to a different host, the huge hosting company OVH, and things are finally good. So after 20 days and more downtime than I can even count, in fact there was so much downtime, some guy legit made a video about it, that's right, the server was crashing so much, some guy made a video talking about it. <sighs> The OG SMP was finally alive and kicking. The SMP is now functional, but we had quite a few exploits that we had to deal with. I'll give you a rundown. On the server, we had a custom plugin called the Rep Plugin. The way this worked was that if you did something bad, like kill or grief a player, they could down rep you, and if you did something good, like help a player, they could up rep you. If you lost too much rep, you would eventually begin getting punished, with the ultimate punishment at negative 15 rep being your coordinates permanently being displayed on the tab menu for everyone to see. Well, the rep database just happened to corrupt some time mid-May and set everyone's rep to the negative integer limit, effectively leaking the coordinates and thus base to everyone who was online the server at the time. Since this is an SMP where you can't claim land and griefing and PvP is allowed, this actually made the server unplayable. So much so that the server for about half an hour had either zero players online or only one. It was quickly fixed, but a few bases were lost due to it. Then, about a month later in June, a player figured out that if they opened the cosmetics UI, where normally you would enable and disable various cosmetics and spam clicked a bunch of times, for some reason it would let you take out the items from the GUI. The GUI of course contained barrier blocks and as such, a variety of players managed to get barrier blocks, leading us to have to find a way to blacklist them, although a few remained on the map for some time after. So besides the series of crashes, issues and exploits, some of which were out of our control and some of which were our mistakes, the SMP was generally pretty well received and did maintain better activity and more players than survival games. That being said, I, the server's main and only source of advertising and promotion, had not yet learned an important element of running a Minecraft server, and I'll explain it to you right now. When I would release a video promoting the server or do a stream, there would be an influx of new players which would join. Gradually, as the days passed, the number of new players joining from those videos or streams would decrease and decrease, but some would stay and become active players. Over time though, as is natural, active players get bored, take breaks, or just leave the server. It's a completely normal process. So that means in order to maintain an active and consistent player, base on a server, you need to have a constant flow of new players coming in to replace the older ones naturally leaving. If you don't, the server gradually loses more and more players, eventually dying. Sounds straightforward right? Well, I don't think I quite realised just how much promotion is required to keep a server active. There's a reason most YouTuber servers die not long after release. Look at Tubnet, I showed Speed's recent server, and dozens of other examples of YouTuber servers that died. And that reason is, you can't just release one or two videos every few months and leave it at that. You need a lot of regular promotion, far more regular than I was doing at the time, so you constantly have a source of new players joining the server to replace the old ones. As such, throughout June and most of July, the SMP began declining in popularity to the point that it was often seeing as low as 5 to 10 people online. And my videos every so often weren't bringing enough people back to make up for that natural amount of that leave. But we didn't know that. We thought that something else was wrong, like the players had lost interest in the SMP for some reason. Survival Games was also very much still dead, meaning the OG network was dying and dying quickly. We needed to do something. And that's when I came up with the tree experiment.
Some of you probably remember seeing this, but in July of 2021, inspired by Tom Scott's video where he used a script to constantly update the title of a video to reflect its exact view count, I came up with something similar where every view a video I made got would place one random block in this tree-like algorithmic structure. Basically, one view equals one block placed. The tree, as it began being referred to as, was also visible in-game on the server, and you could see it grow in real time. That was our little strategy to get people on the server. We wanted to run this experiment for about a month, with the first week having a series of 24-7 streams that would entice people to join the server, check out the tree, and potentially play the SP and survival games. The video was a huge success, reaching 1 million views in its first week, and for a brief period of time, the SP and SG were active again. By the end of the month, the experiment finished, the video had about 1 million views, and thus the tree 1 million blocks. Oh, I may have forgot to mention that we accidentally set it to place 2 blocks per view, so it may or may not contain twice as many blocks as it should, but who cares about the semantics? Also, fun fact, Mumbo Jumbo saw the video and joined the server during the first week, even leaving this nice comment for me. Although unfortunately, he joined when we were having technical issues, and the tree world was down. Great timing. By the way, you can download the Tree Experiment World as well as the plugin we used on my Patreon link below. In fact, Mumbo Jumbo wasn't our only guest appearance this month, as for some reason, Sunday also joined the Minecraft SMP around this time. Yeah, this Sunday, the mega famous one. Some players killed him and even took his head. Turns out his account was hacked or something. Pretty random though. If you thought our celebrity guest appearances was over, then think again, as Sunday and Mumbo Jumbo joining wasn't the only thing that happened, as for some reason out of the blue one day, famous Twitch streamer Connor Eats Pants would join the server to play survival games with his 5,000 viewers. He played for a bit, but all of his fans trying to join the server basically crashed it, and as such, he left after not very long. I don't have the VODs from that time, as unfortunately I forgot to save them, but here's a clip from one of the server's mods who tried to get him back on the server. Hop back on OG Network, lol. That's literally the fucking server owner. He's trying to like be subtle about it. It'd be funny as fuck if you hopped back on OG Network. Anyways, the tree experiment was a success, but after about a week as the hype wore off, the SMP and SG basically returned to their dead or dying state again. You see, the vast majority of people who joined the server for this experiment were only interested in the experiment. Why would they play the SMP? That's not what got their interest. This is another lesson I would begin learning around this time, and that's the fact that players are only going to play your server if they find the game modes actually on the server interesting enough, and if it's the reason they joined in the first place. But at the time, me and the other server owner were preoccupied trying to figure out what to do and why the server was so rapidly dying. Huh. You know what? Why don't we do a map reset? And that's exactly what we did, although it was extremely controversial. Yes, that's right, the second of the many OG network controversies would take place in August of 2021, when we announced the first SMP reset. Many players had grown attached to the map and their builds despite no longer even playing themselves, and another good chunk of players also treated the server similar to 2B2T and didn't want it to ever reset. So when we announced that the SMP would be resetting, dozens of players threatened to quit, many others threatened to start their own servers and steal all of our players amongst a myriad of other arguments. One argument that was commonly thrown around was that OG Minecraft servers didn't reset. These players clearly had never played actual OG servers though, as if they had, they would realize that like nerd.nu, the oldest running Minecraft server, which has seen over 30 to 40 resets throughout its almost 15 years of operation, older Minecraft servers would reset super often, even more so than modern ones. Anywho, despite the drama, we still followed through with the reset, and it worked. But enough drama for the time being, let's take a quick interlude and talk about the SMP's most known and famous player. First appearing in a video I made in May 2021, a player named Dog Steve would raise two other players to craft and place cakes, and ever since has become a living legend on the server. Dog Steve came out on top with a time of 24.5 seconds, with Jacko100 just milliseconds behind. Due to his rather amusing name, Notoriety as an OG player of the server, who also gained immense wealth from selling armor and tools at his stall, a religion would quickly form in his name. Dog Steveism, as it is known, is the server's dominant religion, with its various followers erecting many monuments and art pieces in his name throughout the server's three years of operation. To date, there have been about 10 different Dog Steve churches built, of which a variety of sermons have been held at, one gigantic statue in Dog Steve's name, dozens of map arts amongst much, much more. On every Discord post we do in my server's Discord, as well as my own separate YouTube channel's Discord, the first reactions are always the letters D-O-G. 
G S T E V E, obviously spelling out the word Dog Steve. And Dog Steve has even spread outside of the OG SMP, being present in other YouTubers' discords and videos, and even making its way to other Minecraft servers. Three years later, Dog Steveism is still regularly practiced on the server as the followers of Dog Steve praise his existence. Back to business now, though. Upon the reset of the SMP, we saw over 100 plays online again, something we hadn't seen in quite some time. It seemed like all the complaints were from a vocal minority, and the reset did in fact succeed in bringing players and activity back to the server. But the root of the issue, that being the fact that the server was dying because I wasn't promoting it regularly enough, was still left unaddressed, and as such, entering September 2021, the SMP's player count once again began to dwindle and decline. We really didn't know what to do at the time, we couldn't do a reset again, it had only been a month, we were stumped. But the SMP's issues would have to wait, as something else was currently occupying our time. During the SMP's reset and the tree experiment, we had been working on another project in the background. At the time, we were still committed to our goal of reviving older game modes, and the next in that line was a game mode that was very close to my heart. Dominate, otherwise known as Champions, an extremely unique minigame on Mineplex. Dominate was a competitive PvP-based game mode where you would play as one of five classes with special activatable skills and abilities, and the goal was to capture and control various locations around the map to score points. The game mode was, and still is, one of the most unique Minecraft game modes to ever exist. In fact, the game mode actually began on a server called Better MC back in 2012 and 2013, which I played on, that would end up merging with Mineplex and turning it into the server it would become today. Mineplex's owners were the original Better MC owners. Better MC was the predecessor to Mineplex, and is one of the main reasons that Mineplex became the monolith that it did years later. A super important game mode, that's for sure. But like almost everything on Mineplex at the time, it was neglected. Its last update almost four years ago at that point, filled with bugs and issues, and games rarely ever starting anymore. The game mode still had a small but active community, however, so we effectively recreated the game mode extremely faithfully with the goal of updating it and maintaining it to revive it. In September of 2021, Challengers, as we named it, would release, to rather mild Reception. We maybe had about 40 players playing on release, and by the end of the week, despite some promotion in the form of streams from myself, the game mode was already dead. A huge failure, and utterly perplexing to me and the server's other owner at the time. So what went wrong? Well, looking back on it now, it's obvious. The game mode was simply far too complicated and was completely outdated. It was still using 1.8 PvP, which was rapidly being overtaken by modern PvP. Newer players didn't want to learn how to use the weird abilities in fights, they wanted to PvP like all their favourite YouTubers SMPs. And not only that, but outside of Hypixel, minigame servers were just no longer as popular as they once were. Newer players tended to prefer longer, persistent game modes like survival. The other issue was, the few people who did play it were really good at it as well as 1.8 PvP, making it near impossible for new players to get into it and enjoy, as they wouldn't even stand a chance, the skill gap was far too large. So it made sense why the game mode died so fast, and it never really got properly off the ground in the first place, because it only appealed to a very niche subset of players. Regardless, while the game mode was a failure, this was a huge pivotal point for the server and a real wake-up call. We couldn't just release old game modes as they once were, expecting them to magically be popular as they were 10 years ago. There is a reason these old game modes died in the first place, and that's because they failed to adapt and keep up with the changing Minecraft landscape. We needed to evolve these game modes and modernize them. Also, hilariously, just before releasing challenges, one of our developers at the time accidentally deleted the entire game modes files, which led to a few hours of absolute panic. So, we were now roughly 270 days, or 9 months, into the server, and it's the end of 2021. Things were looking rough, but it was around this time that something finally clicked. You can see that the final months of 2021, we had some pretty low player counts. 43 max players, 89 max players, and then 53 max players in December. The SMP, while not super active, did have a small but active player base, and I needed to figure out how to promote it and grow it. On January the 9th, 2022, I uploaded a video most of you probably haven't seen called, Wait, Minecraft Griefing is Good. The video was basically a meta discussion on griefing in Minecraft the issues with it, the good things about it, how it could be balanced better, and more. By itself, the video isn't that notable, but one thing I did here that I had yet to do before is promote the server, but not directly. Let me show you. You see, on my server we created a reputation system where players could add or remove player reputation. 
If a player's reputation entered the negatives, they would progressively begin receiving punishments. For example, they lose the ability- Basically, I found a mechanic on my Minecraft server related to the video topic, which in this case was the custom reputation system we had on the SMP. This allowed me to talk about the server and thus promote it, while also not making it seem like a direct ad for it. I was able to tell the players about my server without randomly cutting and saying, hey guys, this is my server, go join. Anyways, back to the video. And something as simple as that, plus a pinned comment with the server's IP, was enough to double the SMP's play account for about two weeks after the video released. And that's when it finally dawned on me. This is how I could get and maintain an active server. This is how I could promote the server. I had to find video topics that allowed me to talk about the server or make interesting videos about the server, which I would begin doing later. This was the light bulb or eureka moment for me. And this video, while almost entirely forgotten, was extremely important to the server's future. It was also in this same month that we added Geyser to the server, allowing Bedrock players to join and play the SMP as well. This had a bit of a mixed reception at first, but ended up being great for the server in the long run. You can see that in January of 2022, after my video promoting the server and bedrock compatibility had released, the server's play count had doubled. Things were finally looking up. Until they weren't, as OG SMP was about to have its first major dupe exploit. That's right, on the 5th of March 2022, during a routine inspection, one of the server's oldest mods named I Am Miku happened to come across another player named Tanko Gear, who happened to have an unusually high amount of valuable items like netherite blocks, golden apples, as well as shulkers. The mod decided to watch the player while in Vanish to see what they would do, noticing that for some reason, this player and an alt kept on combat logging. On the server, we have always had a plugin which prevents players from combat logging. Basically, if somebody hits you, there is a period of about 20 seconds or so where if you log out, you will be killed. It's a plugin that exists on almost all servers with PvP. As we would later figure out, if a bedrock player entered combat tag, then disconnected and thus was killed because of the combat tag, their items would drop or when they relogged, they would still have the same items in their inventory, thus doubling them. This only happened because of the recently added bedrock compatibility. Anywho, our mod investigated the player and found that they had been duping with an accomplice known as Unfriendly Dragon and had a variety of statues hidden around the server in various bases. And unfortunately, the dupe had been active for a few days and as such, the duped items had already entered the economy and had already been distributed around the server. Thanks to the help of Aya Miku and some of the server's other mods though, a significant number of the duped items were eventually tracked down and removed, whilst the confused general player base made memes about it. To this day, some of the duped items likely remain in circulation on the SMP. Now you may think that this whole ordeal sucked, the server's economy was damaged. But no, you see this gave me the perfect idea and chance to make another video that could promote the server, which I would do about two months later. A video where I talked about all the issues with Java and Bedrock crossplay, most of which was related to my server. This was the first time I did a video where I primarily talked about my server and it was a huge success. We got a bunch of new players from the video and once again increased the server's activity. We turned a negative situation into a net positive gain. It was around this time that a funny incident occurred that I just have to share with you. So in early 2022, while I was online the SMP, a new player joined for the first time with the username Fart Smag. Pretty funny, I know. As I always do whenever a new player joins for the first time while I am online, I welcome them. Somebody thought this was funny and took a cropped screenshot of me welcoming this player and sent it in the server's discord. Pretty normal stuff. However, little did we know that that such a screenshot would be paramount in solving an important moderation case. Around the same time, there was a player who was supposedly saying the N-word a lot, but hadn't logged in for a while. Another player who tried to report that player couldn't remember their exact username as it had a bunch of numbers at the end of it. Therefore, we couldn't investigate that player's logs as we weren't sure who it was. But the player, whilst looking through the Discord, happened to see the cropped image of me welcoming Farts Mag, and below my message, half cropped out, was the player who had been saying the n-word. Using this crop, one of the server's mods was able to figure out his exact username and ban him. The only reason we caught the culprit was because I happened to welcome Fartsmag to the server. Fartsmag went down as a legend on the OG network, and despite leaving the server after only 30 seconds and never rejoining again, will forever go down in OG network history.
Okay, so the SMP was now in a good state. It had a consistent and active player base of around 50 to 80 average players and a healthy stream of new players coming in from my videos as well as new Bedrock players finally being able to join the server. But Survival Games, the server's first and founding game mode was still in an absolutely dire situation. I should also state that Survival Games as a mini game in general was dead by this point. MC Central was barely seeing any players, Backplay only had game start when someone was streaming and almost all other servers that ran survival games, if any were left, saw next to no players. It wasn't just our server struggling with it. We had to do something to bring it back. How could we make survival games active again? And here was our idea. Starting in early 2022, we began beta testing a unique spin on survival games, Survival Games 2.0 as we named it. The key differences were that we had added a variety of scenarios, special game modifications that changed how games were played. Players would vote which scenario they wanted to play before the game started. For example, there was a scenario where you always had speed 2, one where you could only use bows, another where you spawned in random locations, one where you only had these custom bomb items, and a handful more. Furthermore, we had also taken inspiration from Minecraft Monday and added some new features to SG in general, such as these heads which gave you buffs when you killed someone and special items. There were also random events which could take place in game, like a one heart event or a fireball event, and a shop where you could buy items. The goal was to basically make SG more interesting and fun to hopefully keep people playing it longer. In March of that year, Survival Games 2.0 would release and was decently successful. The players liked it and it had increased activity for a few weeks, but once again, it still had the same issues. Simply put, most players were no longer interested in 1.8 combat and newer players struggled to get into it because the skill difference between them and good players was too great. I'll give you an example. Let's say a player from my SMP who has never played 1.8 PvP before or just isn't that experienced with it decides to try out survival games on my server. They join a game, loot for about 5-10 to 10 minutes before running into an experienced player who destroys them so badly that they could barely even get a single hit in. They just wasted a few minutes for nothing and say screw it and go back to the SMP, never trying SG again. The game mode was still too hard for newer players because of the 1.8 PvP skill gap and as such it failed to attract them. This is the same reason the game mode died everywhere else as well. The remaining SG players were just too good that newer SG players could never really get into it. On April the 3rd, 2022, the server's one year anniversary, we announced that we were going to be running another experiment. This time it was going to be our place, but in Minecraft. I actually got this idea from a YouTube comment on the tree experiment video, and we decided the server's anniversary would be a perfect time to run it. Little did we know though that the stars aligned, and after five years, Reddit itself decided to bring back their original our place event as well, on the exact same date we were running ours. During the our place event, we would also hit the server's record play account of over 240 players online. It was a huge success. To summarize how it worked, every 45 seconds players could place one of 60 blocks on the 200 by 200 blank canvas. What made it more fun than the actual R place, at least according to the players, was being able to see and talk to other players in game, allowing them to easily communicate with each other and set up teams or alliances, as well as troll even better. We ran a 24-7 livestream of the entire event, which lasted about a week, and thousands of players participated, with over 560,000 blocks placed in total. I made an entire video about it here that now has almost two and a half million views. It was a very fun event, and even now, almost two years later, I still get people asking if we are going to do it again. So why haven't we, you may be asking. Well, you see, once again, a key reason we decided to do this experiment was to help promote the server, especially the, at the time, newly released Survival Games 2.0. But as with the last experiment, players simply weren't interested in anything else on the server besides our place. As such, after the event had ended, the server's play count basically instantly returned to normal. The event was a huge success, but it had failed to help the server grow in any way. If you want, you can download the our place final world save, as well as the plugin we used to make it all work, in my Patreon link below. Okay, so it's about the middle of 2022 now. The server has been running for one year and three months, roughly 450 days, and the SMP has continued to maintain a healthy player base, as I had finally learned how to promote it and keep it active. 
I did the first of my base tour competitions around this time, basically where I log on whilst live streaming and players TP me to their bases and the best bases get some prizes. The stream and event really showcased just how dedicated the SMP player base had become, working together as guilds to build gigantic bases tens of thousands of blocks away from spawn. It was seriously impressive. But more interestingly around this time was an exploit a player on my server had encountered which would later end up influencing the lifesteal SMP. A player on my server known as Chromatic Prism had this strange issue pop up randomly where they would connect to my server and another at the same time. Stick with me here, I'll explain explain it. Basically, for some bizarre reason, Chromatic Prism was, for example, able to log into my server and Hypixel at the same time, where they would be online my server but could see the Hypixel chat and talk to people on Hypixel. There was also some bizarre glitches going on where the time of day would randomly keep changing, invisible blocks would prevent you from moving, and much more. Now, Chromatic Prism just brought it up in the Discord casually, but this immediately stood out to me because I had the same thing happen to me once two years ago, and never again after that. So we figured out a method to replicate the bug consistently and started playing around with it and seeing what we could do. One thing we tried was transferring items from one server to another. I performed the exploit and joined the SMP and my private server at the same time, then got Chromatic Prism on the SMP to throw me some items. Shockingly, the items from my SMP somehow transferred to my private server. We had teleported them, or as some of you would now know it as, wormholed them in. I was pretty shocked and of course had to make a video on it, which once again helped promote the server. But I would later learn that the only reason this worked was because I was in creative mode and it wouldn't be exploitable in servers like 2b2t because you only had access to survival there. Still a very cool bug and I wasn't the only one who thought so, as about a year later, popular lifesteal SMP YouTuber Spoke would upload a video using this exact same wormhole exploit I showcased to completely break the lifesteal SMP, a video which went viral and now has 3.5 million views. So pretty cool how one small exploit on my server led to a massively popular lifesteal SMP video that millions of people around the world saw. After seeing the success of the video about this bizarre exploit, I began to realize that exploits were a great way to promote the server. It became a running joke on the server that whenever somebody found some powerful game-breaking exploit, my first response would always be telling them to record it so I could make it into a video, rather than panic and asking them what they did so we could patch it. And one month later, I got another opportunity to make a banger video. In late July of 2022, out of the blue, the SMP just randomly broke. Chunks were loading weirdly or not loading at all, and entities like arrows and items seemed to be duplicating themselves. So I did what any YouTuber would, dropped everything, logged on, and began recording. This was absolutely bizarre by the way. For some reason, the chunks at the SMP spawn just disappeared or would not allow you to walk in them, and items were bugging out like crazy. To this day, we still don't actually know what the hell happened, and it's never happened again since either. We restarted the server which fixed it, I made the video, and waited for somebody to inevitably come in with a solution. But they never did. It's one of the server's biggest mysteries to date. Regardless, this whole ordeal served as great promotion for the server as everyone wanted to try and figure out what the issue was. We had almost 1,000 people join the Discord just that day alone. While things were going well on the play account side of the server, something which was becoming rapidly evident to me and the server's other owner was that it was not doing that great financially. As you would probably know, up to this point and for some time after still, the server was non-pay to win as was decided during the server's inception, and as we'll get into later, this meant that the server earned a lot less money than most. The reason this was going to be a problem was because the size of the SMP's map had gotten so big that we needed to purchase a new separate server to host the world on, thus increasing our monthly hosting costs. We quickly realized that if we wanted to continue expanding and releasing new game modes, as was our goal from day one, the server needed to consistently make more money. Therefore, in August of 2022, we did an SMP update where we changed the spawn and mark Market, but more importantly, added a new, more expensive rank to the store. This went okay, but not all players were happy with it. In fact, only a few weeks later, some players on the server displeased with this change, amongst other things that had happened within the server's past year, such as the addition of bedrock support, decided to try to cause some serious harm to the server. You see, some players on the server were more anarchy type and disliked anything at all that leaned more into the plugin or modified side of the server, preferring a traditional vanilla griefing type experience. 
ranks. So obviously, they already weren't exactly fond of the server's ranks and commands, like the ability to set homes, despite the server not trying to be anarchy or traditional vanilla in any way. In that same update where we added a new rank, a new donation perk we also added was the ability to use chat placeholders. So for example, players could type bracket, pause, close bracket to share their coordinates in chat, or ender, item, and a few other things. The plugin we used to add this also had a feature which we forgot to disable and unintentionally snuck its way into the SMP, where you could hover over players' names in chat and see some statistics about them, including their current coordinates. This was very quickly removed and almost nobody knew of its existence, but unfortunately the same group of players who disliked the new server rank addition, who were also all part of a guild called Obsidian, found it before its removal. For a few days, they documented base coordinates privately and then waited until September the 11th, 9-11, to grief every single base they had found. However, what the Obsidian Guild didn't know was that another player had coincidentally been inciting them. You see, many of the Obsidian Guild members were not particularly liked and they had quite the target on their back for their many prior base griefs. They had made a lot of powerful enemies. One such enemy managed to inside their guild on an alt account, record a 31 minute long video of their private discord chat and then sent it to staff. From the video we were able to IP ban a lot of the Obsidian Guild's malicious members who at the time were trying anything and everything to destroy the server, from dupes to crash exploits to even trying to get the server's PayPal banned. We were able to protect and roll back the bases they tried to grief and ban most of them, but many still evaded their bans on alts for months after. That wasn't the only coordinate exploit the server faced either. In fact, just a month prior, Chromatic Prism discovered that because at the time players' custom usernames above their heads used an armor stand instead of a name tag, certain map mods would display players on them no matter where they were. This meant that you could effectively get a live view of everybody on the server, including players at the hidden bases. Luckily, Chromatic Prism did not share the exploit or try to abuse it, but reported it to the staff. Oh boy. That one could have been bad though. And you know what? While we are on the topic of exploits, might as well discuss a few others we encountered around the same time. This is one element of running a Minecraft server that you can never truly be prepared for. As long as there are active players, there will always be new exploits. No matter how well the server is set up, you can never truly predict when shit will hit the fan, and suddenly your nice evening playing Rocket League has been turned into a stressful cat and mouse game where you have to try to find the exploiters, unwillingly cooperate so they explain how they do the exploit and then try to fix it. Anyways, the same update we added a new rank and updated the spawn, a new feature of the market which allowed players to edit the blocks of their stall was exploited. To give some context, on the SMP there is a market where players can rent stalls and create sign shops in order to buy and sell various goods. It's what most of the server's economy is based around. In order to entice players to donate for the new rank more, one perk we added was allowing such players to customize some of the blocks in their stall. Players quickly figured out that if they placed a block they wanted to dupe like a netherite block in their stall, went and customized their stall, mined the block, then reset their stall's customization, the block they mined would reappear, basically doubling it. This is due to an oversight in the plugin which reset the entire stall, rather than just the blocks that made up it, which we promptly fixed, although not after some players completely filled their stalls with duped netherite blocks. On the server we also had an events plugin, where every 30 minutes or whenever a donator wanted to, an event such as Spleef, Skywars and more would start. Players would be teleported ported away from the SMP to the world where the event took place with none of their items and then TP back when it was over. Some players happened to figure out though that in Skywars, if they built a nether portal, it would teleport them back to the normal SMP world. Then, if they ran towards 0-0 in the nether and entered a portal, taking them back to the overworld and thus the protected spawn area, because the server still thought the players were in the event, players had additional permissions to place and destroy blocks anywhere, including the protected spawn area, which obviously wasn't ideal. Very amusing. One night in August 2022, while I was calmly working on a video, I got a panicked ping from my server's admin with a screenshot of our server's console. The screenshot basically showed me logging on, giving some random players full server owner permissions, and then logging off. We all completely freaked out, me especially though, as I thought someone had somehow hacked my Minecraft account. Anywho, we later found out we got extremely lucky, as what had happened to us was an old exploit called bungee spoofing. I talk about it more in this video here, but basically all you 
you need to know is that if a service bungee cord, which is a server proxy linking multiple servers together, for example a harbor, a survival server, a bedwars lobby and more, is poorly configured or the service network firewall isn't set up properly, malicious users can replicate that service bungee cord settings and log in as you while in offline mode, which means all they need is a username to log in. From there, they can use your account to op other accounts on the main server and wreak havoc. We got extremely lucky that the players who got op on my server likely wanted to wait until the server's uptime to grief, but our admin randomly whilst checking the server caught them before they could do any real harm. All of these exploits, whilst annoying at the time, were eventually turned into yet another video promoting the server simply because you guys all love exploit videos and they help boost the server's popularity immensely. On the topic of exploits, we need to quickly sidetrack this video to talk about a player who became infamous for doing so. A player named Minecrafter would become renowned on the server for receiving the most bans of any player and also ban evading the most of any player to date. Minecrafter has been banned about 10 times, has been ban evading for one and a half years, and has used almost 30 different alt accounts to evade his bans. Let me give you a rundown of some of the various escapades he has been involved in. In early 2022, Minecrafter found out alongside another player that he could use a flying machine to escape the event's world. Using this method he was able to get outside of the server's world border and use the flying machine to fly out 10,000 blocks past the world border and made an unraidable base and teepid his friends over. He used this same method to get some of the event's items and use them in the normal world as well. Escaping the event's world while in events mode had some funky mechanic interactions like being able to use a gun from a paintball minigame we had, being immune to other players attacks, destroying and resetting chests in other players market stalls and more. 7 day ban. Minecrafter was also the player who discovered the Skywars event bug which allowed him to break blocks at spawn as we talked about earlier, 30 day ban for abusing the bug to bring items into the overworld. And rather coincidentally, Minecrafter was one of the players who was also involved in the stall duplication glitch, another 30 day ban for duping. In October 2022, Minecrafter found out that he could spam the command to remove a friend from your friends list and even after the friend was removed, it kept spamming the same message. If done with a macro, it would begin to lag the server. Minecrafter did so lagged the server and was banned for 30 days, but this was reduced to 7 days. Only 2 days after he was unbanned, Minecrafter would be banned again in November of 2022, this time for finding yet another method of escaping the Skywars event to break blocks at spawn and in protected areas. He was relentless. This was now his 5th ban, and after this, some of the players including Minecrafter's guild members began a free Minecrafter protest where they would join the server's discord voice channels, all nicknamed as free Minecrafter, and sit there deafened for days on end. End. Players would start spamming hashtag free Minecraft in the Discord, they built free Minecraft map parts, and they still sometimes mention it to this day, almost two years later. He was eventually unbanned. In January 2023, during a beta for another game mode we will talk about soon, Minecrafter somehow figured out how to leave the main world and enter an area he was not meant to. He refused to say how he did it after being questioned, so he was banned. After a few days, and once he finally revealed how he did it, he was unbanned again. Then finally, in early 2023, Minecrafter found a glitch to obtain the Disco Armor cosmetic donation perk as an actual item, something you aren't meant to do. But what was actually bad about this exploit is that if a player somehow managed to get to these Disco Armor items in their inventory, they wouldn't be able to remove them or move them around their inventory in general, unless they died. Minecrafter would use this exploit to get a bunch of Disco Armor and distribute it to players by killing himself, screwing up other players' inventories. This was the final straw and Minecrafter was permanently IP banned not long after. Play Players made a grave for him at his wheat farm that same day. However, Minecrafter never stopped playing. Three months later in March, a player informed us that Minecrafter had been ban evading for the past three months under a new account, one of which he even donated on to seem even more inconspicuous. He was once again banned. Then, only a few weeks ago now, we found out when Minecrafter accidentally forgot to turn his VPN on that he had been ban evading for almost a year on not one, not two, not three, not even four, but over 25 different Minecraft accounts and likely still ban evades to this day. Back to business now though. Besides all the various exploits and bugs the server faced, the remaining few months of 2022 were pretty calm. The server's player count remained stable, we were now regularly seeing over 100 players log in daily, and had an active player base. Survival games was for the most part still pretty dead, games would run occasionally but that was all, same as challenges, but we had moved on from minigames by this point, as did the general Minecraft server landscape. One thing that became popular on the server around this time though was map arts. For those of you who don't know, map arts are basically 
likely in-game Minecraft map pixel arts. In fact, the map art community on the SMP got so big that one of the server's mods and later developers would create an entire museum dedicated to documenting the various map arts of the server and who built them. That museum is hidden under the market and anybody can visit it. To date, there are hundreds, no probably thousands of different map arts documented here, ranging anywhere from various server memes, player heads and skins, many, many anime girls and characters, album covers, Discord profile pictures, Discord messages, and other various artistic creations. Some of these map arts are absolutely huge by the way, containing 16 maps or more combined together, it really is one of the most unique things I've seen on any Minecraft server, and I say that without the bias of it being my own server as well. There are so many map arts and entities down here that even my beefy RTX 3080 is brought to its knees. If you do ever join the SMP, be sure to check it out. It is now December of 2022, 19 months, roughly 570 days since the server began, and the OG network is about to release the very much buggy beta to the server's biggest and most ambitious project. Throughout the latter half of 2022, a game mode we had been developing behind the scenes would finally release in a closed beta, and that game mode was our take on Factions. I'll explain. Factions is one of my personal favourite game modes. My fondest memories playing Minecraft are from the various years I spent playing Factions, ranging from 2012 all the way up to 2018 and 2019. Factions is a game mode where you build bases with a guild or clan, get good gear and armor to fight others, build TNT cannons to raid others, and become the wealthiest and most powerful players on the server. It was a wildly popular game mode in Minecraft's Prime during 2011 to 2016, but died out in the early 2020s, and these days there are only a small handful of servers left running it, most of which were extremely modified and excessively grindy. Not only has Factions strayed far from its roots, but it's too difficult and confusing for newer players to get into, and as such is almost doomed to suffer an inevitable constant decline, where it will eventually fade to nothing. So, our idea was to somehow bring it back, but in a modern style that appealed better to the modern Minecraft player base. Basically, I wanted to capitalize on the popular trend of Minecraft Civilization videos and actually make that in-game. We got a custom plugin made where players can pick one of three civilizations to join, each with their own strengths and perks which they would receive when in their civilizations themed biomes. So, for example, the Wind Runners get speed too, when in lush and tropical type biomes, and the Frostwalkers get resistance when in cold and snowy biomes. Then, within those civilizations, players could make factions and work together with their civilization's factions to raid and break other factions' cores. The winning civilization would be determined by whichever civilization's factions broke the most faction cores. There was a lot of other stuff, but that was the gist of it. Anywho, this turned out to be a huge undertaking as we had to get many large-scale custom plugins made, as no pre-existing plugins existed that did remotely what we wanted. We also wanted to be really unique, so we got custom bosses, an entire custom dungeon, and so many other features that all began to pile up in cost. Plugin development is time-consuming and expensive, and as development for the game mode progress over the months, and the hundreds of dollars we had spent began turning into multiple thousands, we once again began rapidly realizing that something would have to change in order for the server to continue growing and be sustainable into the future. We'll get into that more later. For now, the closed beta for our Civilizations Factions game mode releases and runs for about a month. It was decently successful, we ironed out a lot of bugs, and players seemed to like the concept of the game mode, which was good. It is now early 2023, the server has been running for almost two years at this point, roughly 720 days, and still has a strong and consistent player base. Around this time, a player of the server named Bent would apply for YouTube rank with only around 1-2,000 to 2, subscribers, and then somehow about a month later had almost 100k subs. He would upload a YouTube short promoting the SMP, which now sits at almost 10 million views. As such, throughout much of early 2023, we were seeing player counts as high as 130 to 140 daily on the SMP. This is the power of TikTok and YouTube Shorts, by the way. But the downside is that the players who join from this kind of short-form content do not retain very well. They often leave after not long, and as such, the player count boosts from such videos don't typically last. This wasn't too much of an issue, though, as it seemed like the SMP's max player capacity was around 150 anyways. Beyond that, the server would get quite laggy. If we wanted to grow the server more, it was time to begin looking into other game modes. Plans to do exactly that were already brewing in the background, but in March of 2023, another unique exploit stole our attention. A player would randomly ping me in Discord mentioning that they had found a way to become unkillable as well as invisible to the entire server. At first, I passed it off as some false report, some lag issue, or something else entirely, but when I logged onto the server, I saw another player seemingly unable to hit him from point blank. After he re-logged, things were back to normal though. A few days later, he sends me a video doing the exact same thing, and this time I was seriously interested because it reminded me of a weird occurrence that had happened while I was playing only about a month and a half prior. 
prior. Basically, he logged into the SMP, wasn't visible on the tab menu or visible to any players in game, but could type in chat. However, no commands worked. It was like he was a ghost. Supposedly, the way he replicated this exploit was through disconnecting and reconnecting to his Wi-Fi. He also had bad connection to the server, which helped. Nobody was able to replicate it though. That was until me with my crappy Australian internet could. The exploit was actually really powerful, especially on a server where you can PvP and raid other people. Now, despite the fact that I could replicate the exploit, we had no idea what was causing it or even how to fix it. So I turned the whole ordeal into a video and had a $100 bounty to the first person to figure it out. This served as great promotion for the server and we hit a record high 165 players online the SMP after my video. Someone did in fact figure out that it was an exploit that had existed since 2015 in Bungie Cord, the server-side proxy most servers use, and it was promptly patched. So that whole thing was pretty cool. I got an interesting video for my channel and some great server promotion, a nice double whammy. In mid-April of 2023, now two years after the server's release, we opened up our faction's game mode to the public for an open beta. It was a huge hit. We saw player counts as high as 150 players just from a community post and Discord announcement. Such a huge hit that the first few hours it was open were spent in a perpetual state of lag and crashing. After a few hours that was mostly resolved and the open beta event began. Now I'll spare you most of the details because I'm planning to make a full video about that soon and there's almost two weeks worth of footage to cover, but in general it was pretty buggy as expected. For example, for the open beta, I wanted to run a boss event where all the players on the server would fight this custom with a boss and the first time we tried it, it crashed, the second time we tried it, the boss bugged out, the third time we tried it, half the players got disconnected and the fourth time when the players actually killed the boss, nobody got any rewards. That should give you a rough idea of just how buggy things truly were, but I guess that's what happens when most of the game mode is custom made. The event eventually came to its conclusion after about a month with a total of close to 5,000 people joining, now we will just have to really knuckle down and get things fixed. Things were looking promising. In the meantime though, the prevailing issues of the SMP continued to loom. The SMP was now almost two years old, and its world size had grown exponentially, already requiring another server to host it. Well now we were beginning to encounter another issue, or rather the same issue in that we were once again running out of space, especially since with the upcoming 1.20, we would have to expand the world border again, so players would be able to access the new features like the cherry blossom biomes. But we did have a solution, although it wasn't without its controversies. The SMP's world border is about 55,000 blocks in each direction, which isn't that much, but because we don't want it to lag, we pre-generated all the server's chunks in advance. We did this with the nether and end as well, but accidentally made the nether too big, the same size as the overworld at 55,000 blocks. This led to the nether, a dimension which wasn't very highly populated, taking up a lot of space. As such, we decided to do a nether trim. Basically, we would be cutting the nether back to 15,000 blocks and would delete everything else, which mind you was almost exclusively unexplored or unused chunks. This would greatly free up space for the server. We gave the players quite a bit of a heads up to move any items or anything they had in those chunks so they wouldn't be deleted. But some players were not happy with this change though, even though the number of active bases in the depths of the nether could likely be counted on one hand. What we really learned from this whole ordeal is that no matter what, some players just do not like change, especially when they don't see it directly positively affecting them. If you've ever run a Minecraft server before, you know exactly what I mean. Despite how positive and how beneficial a change may be for a server, there will always be people who complain no matter what. And while overwhelmingly, the majority of players and the server in general would benefit from the nether trim, allowing the new 1.20 features to generate, people who barely used the nether in the first place would still complain as if they had lost a part of themselves. Regardless, the trim went ahead in July of 2023 and some of the SMP storage issues were alleviated for the time being. In September 2023, something rather crazy would happen. A good chunk of you probably saw this video here, but to summarize, one of the server's very first moderators, who I referred to as F, who was mod since the server's inception, went to, put it politely, considerably off the rails. So we had this mod who was active on the server since it first began, and was a really good mod, mind you, active in server and play events, and even writing a staff application guide. Well, after about a year of moderating, this player, F, would resign from the mod team. No hard feelings or resentment, he just simply became disinterested in the server. A few months later in May of 2022, F would return to the server and would end up using hacks and getting banned. 
That said, F was very apologetic, immediately owned up to hacking, and even after being offered a reduced ban cooldown due to his prior positive reputation on the server, was willing to serve out the full duration of the punishment. After eventually being unbanned, F continued playing on and off on the server as a normal, well-liked player. Then, for some reason, out of the blue, in 2023, F would begin sending very disturbing messages to various members of the staff team, threatening various obscenities and claiming staff members were trying to dox or harm him, amongst other absurdly delusional claims. Some of the stuff F said I didn't show in that video and won't show you now because it's extremely damaging, but all you have to know was that beyond whatever was going on here, F who was likely quite young and impressionable had gone down some very harmful rabbit hole of political beliefs and opinions. This screenshot here should be more than enough to demonstrate that something had gone seriously wrong at some point. Anyways, F wanted to basically destroy the server for whatever delusional reason he had come up with in his head and was dead set on trying to make the staff's team experience a nightmare. So he supposedly had found a coordinate exploit and had used it to gather the coordinates to hundreds of players' bases and he was going to leak it to the public soon. The goal was to basically get all the service players and donators to quit playing as all their bases would be griefed, thus killing the server. He would leak the coordinates in September, expecting the server to crumble, but little did he know, we'd been watching him and preparing the entire time. While F had been spending months collecting base coordinates and planning this exploit, he made the mistake of telling a player he thought he could trust everything he was planning to do. That player relayed every single thing he said right back to me, the servers of the owner, and our admin. So, the entire time he was planning to destroy the server, we'd been patiently watching him. There was never any coordinate exploit as F had claimed, but rather he had used his prior mod experiences to infiltrate the server staff team on a new account, and then used his mod powers to randomly TP to players and document their base cords. We of course knew this, and after deducing who was the mole staff account, would ban him after only a few days, cutting his plans to get the cords to thousands of bases on the server short. As such, when it came time for F to leak the small list of base coordinates he managed to get before we stopped him, we were ready, and protected the bases and moved them, rendering the entire ordeal pointless. Now, you'd think that any server owner, upon hearing a player state they had a huge game-breaking coordinate exploit, would be absolutely panicking, especially one as deluded and dedicated as F. But all I can say is that as soon as I heard about it, I had a huge grin on my face, realizing the astronomical potential for a video and thus server promotion this whole ordeal had. I of course turned the whole situation into a video, and after the video was released, we hit a new record number of plays on the SMP at over 170, and this video alone netted us tens of thousands of new players for months after, once again reaffirming just how beneficial exploits were for the server. Thanks F, I know you're watching. Throughout this video, I briefly talked about some of the server's financial issues stemming from our lack of pay-to-win mechanics. Well, this all came to a head in December of 2023. Throughout 2023, after we had invested thousands into factions development amongst other endeavors, we had become well aware that the server was not financially viable and simply did not earn enough to sustain itself into the future. But the growing issue was that new game modes were expensive, far more expensive than the SMP as I demonstrated to you with our factions mode. And not only that, but the server's other owner who had been tirelessly running the server in the background, dedicating dozens of hours to it every week, could no longer afford to make such a time commitment without any financial return, as he had just gotten a full-time job. Basically, we realized that if the server didn't make more money, it wouldn't be able to continue growing and surviving into the future. So, we had a few options in front of us. Option A would be to make the server, particularly the current SMP, pay to win. Option B would be to make money elsewhere to fund the server. And option C would be to release a new game mode that is pay to win. After talking with some of the server's longer term players throughout the year, we effectively decided option C would be the best course of action. Since majority of the server's player base played the SMP, as long as that didn't change, most wouldn't care. So we got to work. In December of 2023, the first open beta would release for our new pay to win game mode, the RPG SMP as we called it. This was an SMP different to our other SMP. Rather than allowing PvP and raiding, this was a cooperative PvE type SMP, where you could claim land and PvP was optional. We got a custom class plugin made, which allowed players to pick one of four classes, Rogue, Shogun, Droid, and Cleric, each with their own special perks as well as abilities that could be upgraded. We also had three custom-made dungeons where players could face waves of increasingly more difficult mobs to earn money. We had custom terrain and economy and more. Basically, it was a more relaxed and collaborative alternative to our other competitive and raiding-focused SMP for players who preferred that. Now, throughout 2023, we had been talking with players on the server a lot about our plans to release a pay-to-win mode, and as such, when it released, most of the service players did not care at all, as long as the normal SMP remained non-pay-to-win, 
they were happy and understood that releasing a pay to win mode was paramount to the server's future. That being said, in January of 2024, when I would make my video talking about pay to win servers and how we had released a pay to win mode on my own server, quite a few people weren't happy. Now, that's a long 36 minute video in of itself, but to give you a general summary, basically, I demonstrated that non pay to win servers made 4 to 30 times less than pay to win ones by tracking a variety of Minecraft servers' earnings over a period of a month. I then talked about how expensive running a Minecraft server was and that most of the non pay to win servers were either barely breaking even each month or losing money every month, despite having hundreds of players. I talked about how advertising costs for a server are also mega expensive and my server never would have survived if it weren't for the fact that we had infinite free advertising in the form of my YouTube channel, a luxury most servers don't have. Basically, my goal with this video was to truly demonstrate to everyone, of which most have never been involved in the behind the scenes of a server before, just how insanely difficult and expensive it is to run a Minecraft server, 10 times more so if it's non pay to win. I also really wanted to drive home the point that most non pay to win servers are simply financially unviable. I also then talked about methods of ethically monetizing Minecraft servers, such as excluding all real money gambling mechanics such as crates, and ensuring that everything that can be paid for can also be obtained in game for free through normal gameplay. Check the video out if you want to know more about this stuff. Anywho, that video would end up being my second most disliked video ever, only behind this one about Dream, at a roughly 80 to 20% like to dislike ratio. What surprised me the most was the number of people in the comments who had some rather choice words for me that either outright refused to watch a majority of the video or when I would question them refused to even engage with me at all. Furthermore, what was quite interesting to me was the amount of people who didn't play my server or really any Minecraft servers at all as a matter of fact commenting extremely ignorant things such as rather than make it pay to win you should make it pay to play or short-sighted comments like if your server can't run as non-pay to win don't run it at all. It's like people didn't even think about what they were saying for example to the people who said you shouldn't run a server if it has to be pay to win, do they realize that if their logic was followed, then we wouldn't even have the small number of non pay to win servers that do exist today, as almost all aren't financially viable. The amount of comments from people who acted as if they so confidently knew what they were talking about, despite clearly having zero experience running a server, was also very interesting to me as well. I think if anything, it really shows a divide in knowledge and perspective between server owners and just normal players. There were so many people who claimed they could run my server better, ignoring the fact that I was one of the only if not the only anti pay to win YouTuber who actually tried running a non pay to win server, actively trying to improve the Minecraft server landscape by providing a viable alternative rather than just making duping or crashing videos that ultimately have little to no impact in the grand scheme of things. Overall, it was slightly shocking how many people who never played my server nor play servers in general seemed so offended by this change as if I was the devil, whilst my server's actual players couldn't give a rat's ass for the most part. Regardless, the RPG SMP would release, and while I won't get into financials as I want to save that for a future video, I can tell you that despite having a smaller player base than the SMP, it easily makes two to three times more than the SMP and has made the server's future seem much more financially secure. So now we have caught up to current day. It's been roughly 1,100 days at this point, or just over three years. About a week before this video, Factions entered another open beta. We are now extremely close to releasing it and things are looking very promising. You yourself can come join it and try it out now as well. It is by far our most unique game mode and the direction I want to focus on with the survey in the future. Besides that though, where does that leave the SMP, SG, Challenges, the RPG SMP, and just the server in general today, three years after the server has released, roughly 1,130 days later. Well, the server is in a good state. It sees over 100 players daily, and back in March when the RPG SMP had only recently released, we were often seeing upwards of 170 players daily and making the most we'd ever made. I myself have learned a lot over the past three years. Running a Minecraft server is 10 times more difficult than running a successful YouTube channel, that's for sure. And my respect for the many servers who have existed for years without a YouTuber for free advertising is now far greater than it was before. The server has had a lot of of ups and downs, but we persevered through it, and now I think we have the opportunity to really do something notable, especially with our Civilizations Factions game mode coming out soon. And hopefully we will go down in history as a Minecraft server to be remembered. I have also learnt a lot about pay to win and server monetization, and whilst at one point I was very much against it, I have now come to realise through three years of running a non pay to win server that it is simply a necessary evil, a mechanic that is required for servers to survive and thrive. Simply put, you don't know how hard and expensive running a Minecraft 
Minecraft server is until you actually run one yourself, that's for sure. And if you do decide to run a non-pay-to-win one, all you are doing is shooting yourself in the foot. You know what to do now. If this video has taught you anything, it's that I've just tricked you all into watching a one hour long advertisement for my Minecraft server. So join it, here's the IP, og-network.net. Bedrock players can join it too with the port 19132. That means PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, you name it, can all also join the server. Our Discord is also down below. Give it a try and who knows, you could be featured in a video in the future. Be sure to subscribe, I'm never making a video this long again, and this time I mean it. Check out my Patreon as well for various world downloads and plugins from my server. Thank you all so much for watching.